Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us for an important Big Ten battle as these two teams are jockeying for position. Right now, Minnesota comfortably out in front, but Michigan is all alone in second. However, a loss today would drop the Wolverines down below Illinois, Wisconsin, and Purdue into a tie with Iowa. Meanwhile, Indiana all alone at 500 in the conference at 6-6. Six and six. I'm joined by Billy Packard. Sean. How are you doing today, Billy? Doing great. <laughs> what about this Big Ten? Controlled by Michigan in the maize and blue. Indiana in the visiting red. Sean McDonough with Billy Packer. Has oh. to have you with us for this Big Ten battle. Reed went down. He ran right through the screen. Maurice Taylor missed the game's first shot, but it got tipped to Robert Trailer. Travis Conlon missed a three. Out of bounds to Indiana. Here are the starting lineups for Bob Knight, his 17th different starting lineup. Reed, Guyton, Collier, Miller, and Mandeville. And for Michigan, it's Bullock. Conlon, Taylor, Ward, and Trailer. One of the things that's always interesting when the guards are not matched up on both ends of the court with the same man, see how this really hurts in regard to Bullock. Reed's on Bullock, but Bullock is not, Bullock is not on Reed. So going back down the other end of the court in transition, Bullock could get off a three. Collier went to shoot. He was fouled on the floor by Travis Conlon. Michigan alone in second, but a loss today. Would drop them beneath Illinois, Wisconsin, and Purdue in the Big Ten standings. So this is a big one for the Wolverines and for Indiana as well, alone at 500 in the Big Ten conference standings at the moment. You start talking about magic numbers now, Sean, for Minnesota. They haven't won a Big Ten title since 1982, but they're uh, closing in on this one. Indiana seeking its 20th win of the season today. The pass from Reed went through the hands of Miller, finally controlled by Conlon. This is the rematch of a game in mid-January in Bloomington, Indiana. The Hoosiers won at home by two. That was a good hustle play by Conlon because he had to assume his team was off and running on the break. He came back to help out. Gerard Ward carries a three, the first bucket of the ball game. Scary sight for Indiana when Ward gets off early from the outside. That's where he loves to shoot from. He's a 38% three-point shooter. Collier can make threes. His miss leads to by Miller, who traveled. Good job by Ward going up and not coming down with the chop. Miller got caught in the air. Nothing else he could do but come down. This is the 800th game for Bob Knight as head coach at Indiana. He's won 595. He's also three wins away overall from 700 in his career, including his six seasons at Army. Trailer on Collier. Good job by Collier, then getting back there to get the rebound. His pass intercepted by Bullock, and last touched by Neil Reed, so Michigan will play it in. Three turnovers already by the Hoosiers. Pretty good matchup right out here now, particularly in the inside. There's Steve Fisher. Outstanding career as a coach so far here at Michigan. Conlon 
Guarded by A.J. Guyton. Collier fronting down inside on Trailer. Trailer pondered the 17-footer. Little scouting report there, let him have the one from 15 on out. Ward fouled as he moved toward the bucket. Bob Knight in a very interesting position substitution-wise here. Starting Manderville on the inside. He can really use up about 15 fouls at that position in the low post. And Mandeville just used up one. The foul was on Mandeville. I don't think Bob Knight liked the fact that this was deemed a shooting foul. Ward, the free throw shooter. 69% from the line for the years. The junior from Clinton, Mississippi. You look at Ward, and basically he's made the same number of field goals from three as he has from two and about the same shooting percentage. So that tells you what he wants to do. He wants to shoot that ball beyond the three. He's not going to drive hard to the basket. He has all five points of the game. Michigan out to a 5 nothing lead. More than two minutes played. Indiana looking for its first points. Mandeville just inside the three-point line. The Hoosiers are on the board. And a whistle after the bucket by Jim Burr. He's working with Tom Rucker and Ed Hightower. It might have to do his equipment problem right now for Taylor. As we talked about, he's got that face mask on, had the nose broken. And actually, this is the second one. I understand it got the face mask was broken. They're about a four or five hundred dollar item. So an expensive proposition. Taylor fractured his nose 10 days ago in a game at Wisconsin when he took an elbow from Paul Grant. Seven minutes into that game, Taylor sat out the rest of the game, and Michigan lost by five. Bullock. Reed a little late getting to Bullock. You've got to get out there quickly on him because of his great ability from the three-point line. And a touch foul on Conlon, and that's two quick fouls on Conlon. Taylor's going to come right back in with his face mask adjusted. Brandon Hughes will follow him into the game to replace Conlon. Will take a seat with those two personals. There's Brandon Hughes, the junior college transfer. The first game between these two teams, really strange. Indiana pulling it out 72 70, but neither team able to do anything from a scoring standpoint in the latter stages of the game. Indiana had a big lead. Michigan made a great comeback, but fell short. Good backdoor cut, poor pass. Well, look, a kick ball for the interception. Good call by Tom Rucker. In that game, the two point Indiana win. The Hoosiers did not score in the last six minutes and 14 seconds of the game, but still won. Michigan went the final 317 without scoring and had three shots at a three-pointer to win it by Lewis Bullock. He couldn't make any of the three down the stretch. Miller missed the runner. Collier got a hand on the rebound. The ball bounced off the end line. And the Hoosiers will inbound with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. A trailer sitting down on the bench early in this game, only played 11 minutes, got in foul trouble in the first game, but Baston and Taylor do a fine job in there as well. So these are excellent matchups between these two clubs. Ball and three off the mark from Guyton, but rebounded by Collier. Guyton holds the off. No call. Out of bounds, last touch by Michigan. Guyton having a great year as a freshman, probably be freshman of the year in the Big Ten. Became one of three Indiana rookies, freshman rookies, to have over 100 assists in the year. Isaiah Thomas, Randy Whitman, the others. 7-2 Michigan. Maceo Baston off the bench. Nice hands. Ward, after the good catch, had a shot blocked by Collier, taken away by Taylor. He tried to feed Baston and was knocked out by Neil Reed. There's some of that aggressiveness that Steve Fisher was talking about yesterday. Taylor sticking his nose literally right in the pack to pull that one out. And these two teams played here last year. It was a heated game. Michigan got out to a big early lead. Both coaches got a technical in the first half. Indiana came back to make it close, but Michigan prevailed. And a foul away from the ball. I think of the great battles in 93 with Michigan with their Fab Five against an Indiana team that Fallon Henderson hadn't gotten hurt, probably to work their way to the Final Four that year. An outstanding club, but they beat Michigan twice that year, including a game right here. That was the last time Indiana won here in 1993. Michigan won the last three. Baston with the bucket. 
great quickness, so an entirely different matchup for Collier guarding Baston as opposed to Trailer. 9-2 Michigan. Little flare out by Reed. Collier, the left-hander, missed a short shot, rebounded by Baston. Hughes the push. Hughes traveled. Timeout, 15-43 remaining in the first half. Michigan leads by seven after the dunk by Baston. Maceo so quick on the inside, gets the drop step and gets to the basket before Collier can come over to help out Manderville. Nice play. Chrysler Arena in Arbor, Michigan. Michigan off to a 9-2 lead. Mentioned Indiana's 19 wins. This is also their 17th different starting lineup. Those two numbers wouldn't seem to go together. Bob Knight looking for the right combinations today. Andre Patterson again not in the starting lineup. Patterson not in the lineup. Expected to play, though. He has practiced. We're talking about the leading scorer in this Indiana club. Indiana did not have Patterson for the first game either. But uh, in any game like this, a, a, a tough conference battle, you sure hope you can have all your forces. And Patterson would be... Uh, very helpful if he can get in this lineup, particularly to add some scoring down inside. Indiana has won its last two games playing without Patterson. Home wins against two of the weaker teams of the conference in Ohio State and Penn State. A two-game winning streak on the heels of a three-game losing streak well, for Ward, Indiana. Ward jumped out there, and Miller had an opportunity to go back door. Didn't take advantage of it. Ball tipped away by Baston. He is so quick. One of the best sixth men in the country without any question, Macy O'Baston, the junior from Dallas, averaging 10 points and seven rebounds per game. Well, they actually have, and it's not in the starting lineup, but they have five guys in double figures here at Michigan. Reed rattles in a three. His first points, Indiana just two out of eight from the floor now, but within four points. Reed had eight threes against Michigan, which ties the school record a year ago. 26 points in all in the game last season in Bloomington for Reed. And get back to that matchup of guards. Uh, normally when the guy who's not guarding you, the guy who's guarding you on one end is not the guy you're guarding the other, he can get open. And that's what happened right here. Let's watch. See, Reed will jump over and he gets Bullock. Hughes is being guarded by Guyton and he's not switching over quickly enough. Reed taking advantage of it. Last shot by Reed was a two. The look away pass Hughes to Taylor. He missed from in close, now two to tie. Three for the lead for Indiana. Taylor might be a little bit anxious as Mandeville was swinging elbows with the ball. Reed for the lead. Foul over the back, and that's three on Richard Mandeville, the junior from Pasadena, California. But there, that is one area where Bob Knight has a lot of depth. So as I said today, you can look for him to use 15 fouls at that position. He's got Edgars as well. Uye Zinovich will come in. and So they're, they're the three guys that can use up five fouls and hope that you can get Taylor to get commit some fouls himself. Maybe he gets five against their 15. Be a good trade-off. Uye Zinovich matched up with Trailer at the moment. Two-point Michigan lead, six minutes played. Wide open is Ward. They don't see him. Baston on top, and a foul. <laughs> NC State and Wake Forest in action today. Wake's won the last five. Tim Duncan averaging more than a double-double for the year. Wake Forest, though, gets off to slow starts for a team that's rated as high as they are. NC State just cannot stop losing those close games at the end. Lost another close game to North Carolina earlier in the week. North Carolina in the, in the comeback mode. They're uh, really on a roll now. Coming back to what looked like uh, losses uh, to pull out wins. Big win for Rhode Island in the Atlantic 10 over Temple. Two teams on the NCAA bubble. How about Aston a pair of free throws. Talk about the Atlantic 10. How about that win yesterday? Massachusetts just drilling Maryland. At the Worcester Central. Zinovich with the tip in. Zinovich committed the foul at the other end, and then he Drew the foul from Trailer, who ran him over in 300 pounds. Trailer leveled Mouye Zinovich, a sturdy 250 himself. Uh, Trailer just has to be careful because Mouye Zinovich has the right to that point on the floor. It's the second 
huge crash we had. The first one, uh, this, I, did, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> it was, it was, interesting choice of words today. It, it was Reed came flying through on the very first action of the game and just got leveled to the floor. There was no call on that one, however. First crash, unfortunate situation last year, two days before the Indiana Michigan game here. Maurice Taylor driving a Ford Explorer rolled over. One of the passengers, Robert Taylor, broke his arm and missed the rest of the season, including the game here against Indiana. Guyton rattles in a three. Beautiful screen, no talking by Michigan between Hughes and Conlon. Indiana leads for the first time in their win last month at Bloomington over Michigan. They never trailed in the game. Uyazinovich playing now behind Trailer. Trailer's going to get the ball in that low post. Ward missed a three, kept alive by Baston, but he could not control it. On Sunday. Indiana really utilizing the flare move for Reed and Guyton getting outside for jump shots. Good hit ahead. And Bullock connects with the three off the feed from Conlon. Bullock the leading three-point man in Michigan history now. Pass Glenn Rice, MVP of the NBA All-Star Game, and here he is uh, now the career leader at Michigan. 136 career threes now for Bullock. He's made at least 133 straight games. Follow the rebound action against Muye Zinovich. So he's picked up two very quickly since coming off the bench for Mandeville, who sat down with three. So we're going to see Eggers in here soon. <laughs> you might get the 15 <laughs> fouls you're talking about all in the first half at the rate this is Well, going. it's not bad strategy. But the problem is you've got to get some trade-off fouls on the other end. We saw Etan Thomas of Syracuse last week in a game against Georgetown foul out in seven minutes in the first half against Georgetown. Bullock, a miss. Conlon, he's a surprisingly good rebounder. Got to go back out and then in. Bad play by Baskin. He was being double teamed. He had Conlon on the outside. All he had to do was dump out and then get it right back in. He'd been positioned to score. Timeout. Michigan leads by two. Bastion on the inside, Conlon wide open. He's being double teamed. The object is to hit out and then get the ball back in in much better position to shoot. Watch what happens. Ball does not go outside. A lot of fakes. The defense waiting on him. Nothing for Bastion to do other than take a bad shot. Not a good play. And that's what happens when you don't have a good play. You're mm -hmm. sitting over there next to the coach. Michigan leads by two. They're only four of 13 from the field. Taylor had to adjust the shot when Collier moved in. Trailer traveled. For the contact, Trailer shuffled his feet. Getting up on the offensive glass, though, that's what Michigan will have to do if they're going to win this basketball game. One area that Indiana has not been real good at. For Indiana, it's Reed with Guyton, Miller, Uyazinovich, and Collier. Uyazinovich, strong drive, and the bucket drops for Uyazinovich. He has four off the bench. The first game this year, he had nine points, five rebounds, two assists, picked up right where he left off. That was a fine play. Bob Knight says Uyazinovich is as fast running up and down the court as any big man who's had the trailer. And the foul by Collier. Robert Trailer will have a chance for a three-point play. Now, Trailer was annoyed at what was happening to him. Uzinovich was playing a fine defensive game against him and was banging him around a little bit. You can see how Trailer tried to react when he got his, finally got his opportunity. Collier late getting there. And that's what uh, you're looking for if you're... If you're Michigan, you want to go ahead and continue to pile up these fouls on the high presence of Indiana. Michigan now five out of five from the line. Brandon Hughes comes back in. Indiana earlier against Ohio State shot 52 free throws and made 43, which uh, tied all-time records of Assembly Hall. So they're not getting the line themselves. Steve Fisher said that's a key today, beating Indiana keep them off the free throw line once again this year the Hoosiers have attempted or rather made more free throws than their opponents have attempted Indiana has not gone the line today Collier 
Jovanovic tipped it out of bounds. Michigan plays it in with a three-point lead nearly midway through the half. Jovanovic very active on both ends of the floor. He's going to get some play in time if he continues that. For Michigan, three-guard lineup at the moment. Conlon, Bullock, and Hughes with Trailer and Taylor. Taylor couldn't handle the pass from Conlon. For Indiana, Michael Lewis checks into the game, wearing number 24. Guyton has taken a seat. Zinovich, Michigan bench wanted a double dribble. And he made the one quick drive to the basket. Looked like he won another one on the baseline. Miller played mostly guard last year. This year, mostly forward. Reed inside, blocked by Trailer. Not only blocked it, kept it alive for his team. Now they've got a five on four break. Conlon, a three. Great job by Trailer. Instead of batting that ball away against the smaller man, he just kept it alive. First points for Conlon, a much improved shooter this year, has raised his field goal percentage. 10 points over his career average of 31% starting the year. He's at 41% this season. Miller lost it in traffic. Ryazinovic couldn't handle it in the corner. Not the best of hands. Crowd gets into the game. Indiana needs to slow them down just a little bit. Want to keep this crowd out of the game. They've been able to do it. About 10 minutes here, and you really have it felt like it was a neutral floor. 6-0 run for Michigan. Both teams do a lot of the same things in regard to their offensive structure. Those curl moves off solid screens. Hughes. Rebound Reed. Quickly to Michael Lewis, the freshman from Jasper, Indiana. This pass deflected by Conlon. Four on one for the moment. Conlon. Eight straight Michigan points. They lead by eight, under nine minutes remaining in the half. Lewis kind of telegraphed that pass. Conlon's got pretty long wingspan for a defensive guard. And as Collier accepted the pass, he was shoved in the back by Robert Trailer. We'll see the dish. Kind of telegraphed the play. There's Conlon, when I said with the long arms, does a good job. Reed can't get back in time. Conlon takes it all by himself. And then almost commits a little bit of a problem there by slapping the ball away from Reed. Colin Trailer, his second, just the fourth team foul in Michigan. Conlon over on Reed now doing a better job than Bullock did when Reed got hot from the outside. Zinovich followed up the Collier miss with a miss of his own. Bullock blows by Reed. That was an illegal play. He popped the ball. You wonder how he beat a guy so bad that was Little stealing thunder of the next level. A la Allen Iverson and yep. many others. Who no, I mean, got away with it. You can fake out a guy when you can carry the ball like that. He just it's a hesitating dribble, and you just keep the ball on your palm. See right there, that's an illegal play. Should have been called by the referee. Scotty Pippen can't stop you if you're gonna go ahead and uh, be able to dribble like that. And that was on Bullock who's first. Steve Fisher talks about that as a big area of improvement by Bullock. He used to be much more of a stationary outside shooter. Now he'll take the ball to the bucket. I guess when you can dribble the way he did, it's easy to improve. I don't think Steve would take credit for the illegal dribble. <laughs> Ten-point Michigan lead. Under eight minutes left in the half. Indiana has turned it over six times now. They have only six field goals. Conlon, a runner, and a tip of his miss. Boston tips it in. There's Conlon again, the long wingspan for a guard, making it tough on the offensive boards. He's six a five. five first half. That his runner wouldn't go. Taylor and Bullock both there from Michigan. And the Hoosiers will play it in after a TV timeout. Seven and a half minutes. 
Left in the half, Travis Conlon helping spark the Wolverines to a 12-point lead. They've done what Steve Fisher said they needed to do, keep Indiana off the free throw line. It's a 12-0 run to break the tie and give Michigan that 12-point lead. Kind of amazing keeping them off the line. It's zero for zero. That's blanking them from the line. Not what Bob Knight likes at all. His team's moving the ball pretty well. And, you know, this game seems to be a lot closer than the score indicates. Indiana making some bad judgments in passing. It's really hurt them, leading to easy fast break opportunities. Michael Lewis inbounds the fellow freshman Jason Collier. Three freshmen on the court right now, including A.J. Guyton for Indiana. Wiesinovic and Miller round out the five. Some Wiesinovic put his head down, barreled over Baston, and threw it away to Collier. Bad judgments in passing are causing easy fast break layups. Hughes missed the layup. Ward missed the follow. Ward fouled. He'll shoot two. Good hustle by Michigan, beating Indiana back down the floor. But when you make a bad pass, and everybody is off balance in regard to defensive balance, it really can cost you. Michigan taking advantage of it. First foul on Charlie Miller puts Indiana over the limit. Rod Ward to the free throw line. One of six McDonald's High School All-Americans in this game. Three on each team. Ward is also the National High School Player of the Year when he was a senior at Clinton, Mississippi. And has really had problems with the two knee injuries. Here's something that, that I anticipated we'd see here in this first half, and that is if you're going to find out if Patterson can play, you know, you want to play him in the first half so he can get loose to see what he can do. So let's see how well he is going to be able to, to play physically in this uh, game, which is really tough physically on the inside. Patterson in for Indiana. Wearing number 45, he's their leading scorer at 15 points per game. Suffered a sprained right ankle at Iowa on February 4th and has sat out the two games since. He had to sit out the first Michigan game with a knee injury. Had a dislocated kneecap that caused him to miss that game in mid-January. 14-point run oh, for the Baston fouled, rather called for a charge as he Ran over Collier. Now there was a case where Hughes put a teammate in, in trouble. By trying to take something down to the lane that really wasn't there, then he just had to bail out pass, and here comes Baston down, really hoping to be in position to rebound. Makes a catch, but then picks up a foul because he wasn't under control. Michigan by 14. Football score at the moment, 28-14. Indiana's got four and a half minutes now without scoring. Collier dropped the pass, got it back, then turned it over to Ward. How many turnovers with four passing has Indiana had in the last three or four minutes? They have eight turnovers in all here in the half. And Baston is fouled by Michael Lewis. His first. Bob Knight talking to Lewis right now about that double team technique. You go down there, you don't need to be reaching in with your hands. Play for position. Bonus case. Base your pass to the line for Michigan. Those who won, plus the bonus. The game between these two teams here last year, Michigan got off to a 29 to 10 lead. And then had to hang on to win 80 to 75. That was a wild game. Bob Knight came way out onto the court during action. Tried to draw the charge. Yeah, did a good job breaking up a three-on-one, but it cost him a technical. See, when Fisher also got a tee. In a situation where you're going to double down on Baston, Baston has twice as many turnovers as assists. So you don't have to go and reach. Let him make a mistake. Patterson, junior from Abilene, Texas. Another bad pass. Almost another turnover off a pass. Lewis rushed by Conlon, and Lewis will shoot a pair. And that's three fouls now on Travis Conlon. Michigan really only seven deep. And that seven-man rotation, no seniors. I would say in this ball game today, Conlon is the guy that Michigan can ill afford to have on that bench in foul trouble. He's played a fine game defensively. He's made good judgments. So now they go back with Bullock and Hughes. Michael Lewis, freshman from Jasper, Indiana, led the state of Indiana 
in scoring in high school basketball last year. Averaged 31 points per game. Scored over 2,100 points in his high school career. Had 11 assists against Iowa. His big scoring game was against Wisconsin, a team that's really on the roll here in the Big Ten. Steve Fisher said to us yesterday, Wisconsin might not lose another game the rest of the year. Well, if they don't, they'll be in the NCAA tournament. And, that and they'll win it. That means they don't know. Now, wait a minute. Oh, nice move. Fast in the layup. Well, we take that literally to be true. I don't think he was including the NCAA tournament when he made that statement, but he feels that the Badgers could win all the rest of their regular season games. There's no conference tournament in the Big Ten, but that's going to change next year. Illegal screens on the inside by Patterson. He's just looking for guys to pick off another errant pass, and that would have led to an easy fast break again. Lewis, nice pass. Collier, the easy two. That's a good look, and there's a mistake by Michigan. Really errant passing out here by both clubs. And Guyton capitalizes. Goalie inbounding play. Laid it in for two. Indiana back within 12. Five points for A.J. Guyton with five minutes remaining in the half. Taylor wants a turnaround jump. There it is. And he's fouled on the arm by Patterson. Now we talked about the seven-man rotation for Michigan. They are almost always only seven men deep. And they're one of only three teams in the top 25 with no seniors among their top rotation players based on minutes. Two sophomores, five juniors from Michigan. Arizona plays an eight-man rotation with two freshmen, three sophomores, three juniors. Xavier's top six is four sophomores and two juniors. Well, you take into consideration Albert White left and transferred to Missouri. You got Willie Mitchell down at UAB. Bobby Crawford at Rice, who had a big game about a week ago. Uh, Maktar Jai at North Carolina starting to play pretty well. Out, Olive St. John out uh, at San Jose State. So there's your bench. They, they were all here and they left. So it has a, a lot of people to leave your program. And quality players. 14 point lead for Michigan. And assuming you can keep everybody healthy, you know, Coach Wooden won a lot of national championships and only used seven men. So it's not something that uh, means that you can't win ball games. Two point field goal by Miller. What's interesting about that too, Billy, is even though Michigan only plays seven men, their bench has outscored the opponent's bench of the season. Well, they only bring two off the bench usually, but they get plenty of production from those two. Hughes, one of the two, missed a long three. And Baston being the other, who scores uh, over 10, po 10 points a game. Right. Nobody guarding the dribbler. Good ball movement by the Hoosiers. Eggers hit it off to Lewis, who missed a short one, following the rebound action on Michigan. You know, but that is maybe the toughest jump shot for a guard to make. Eight feet away from the basket, you never practice that shot. You're either shooting from three, you're taking it all the way to the hoop, or you pull up and take that 15-foot jumper. The little eight-foot jump shot by a six-footer, if you're playing a game of horse, that's where to put it. Mm -hmm. Make him make that shot from there. It is so tough. Never works on it. Robbie Eggers. Did not get the bounce off the rim. The foul on Maurice Taylor was his first. Both teams are over the limit. With less than four minutes remaining in the first half, Michigan by 12. Taylor toward the offensive rebound. Hughes travel. Now there was Hughes in open position to make the three-point shot. Got so nervous, wanted to drive. Hope College, which is a Division III program, came here to be the manager, started helping out the team and practicing some drills, became a walk-on player, and was awarded a scholarship as a player this year. Eggers missed underneath. Ryan said his career was almost a real before it started. One of his first drills as manager, he was passing the ball to Jawan Howard, hit him in an unfortunate spot during a drill. And he thought he might be asked to leave the program right then. But he stuck around and graduated up from manager to player. And he's a very popular player among the fans here and the coaching staff. Two fouls on Andre Patterson off the bench. 
Patterson certainly not in game condition, and that's kind of obvious, but you can see where Bob Knight was coming from. He wanted to get him out, get him some minutes in the first half, and see what he could uh, provide for him in the second half. But that turnaround jumper, which he normally elevates very well from, uh, that he just took down the other end, Taylor was right there waiting for it. Forrest really having a struggle with NC State today. New Mexico, a winner over Tulsa, an important whack game. Two teams likely to be in the NCAA tournament. And Memphis, so you never know where they're coming from. Michael Lane was on such a nice run. Memphis in the lead. And Villanova, after that the shellacking by Kentucky, went up, struggled against Pitt, got beat, and uh, having to get back on track. Villanova team, really a mystery. Tremendous amount of talent, it seems. Not playing that way. Patterson the miss, rebounded by Bast in his fifth board. Bullock, a runner over Lewis. Pretty good defense, too. Just a great shot. 16-point advantage for Michigan, matching the largest lead the Wolverines have had today. There's that double down that Michigan does so effectively. Baston really quick on his feet. Patterson. Nice follow through. First basket for Patterson. Another one of those McDonald's All-Americans while he was in high school. First team high school All-American at Cooper High School in Abilene, Texas. Last touched by Michigan. Coming up at halftime, two minutes and 11 seconds of game action away. A Recap of the Daytona 500 seen earlier today on CBS. Patterson getting good position down inside. Taylor playing right behind him, so they're getting the ball to Andre. Andre will score on him. Lewis. There he Patterson. is. Patterson is getting excellent position. Bob Knight getting an excellent seven minutes out of him. Indiana shot a season high 57% in a twin Tuesday night. Over Penn State today, just 33%, and as a result, they're down by 12. Hughes, a tough shot with Guyton trying to defend from behind. Smart play by Hughes. He knew he could either draw the foul or sneak down underneath. He had Guyton right in his back. Michigan playing for the first time in eight days and looking sharp, leading by 14. Ward with the takeaway. Ward. Got fouled on the shot. Eggers rebounded, and Lewis kicked it off his knee. Another Indiana turnover. Ward on that last play would have been good for him to give up the ball, get it to a guard, and be a recipient. Indiana has turned it over 10 times. Steve Fisher has called for a 20-second timeout with one minute left in the first half. surging in the late season. And maybe Cincinnati as well. Terrific mm -hmm. game by South Carolina, deploying that three-guard offense. Eddie Fogel really has turned that club around. 14-point win yesterday for South Carolina at Cincinnati as the Gamecocks pulled away late. Bullock with a shot clock at five. Ah! Rebound tipped around. Miller batted it. And Michigan will play it in. And they can take the final shot of the half. Good offensive rebounding by Michigan throughout the course of this half. Shot clock off with 33.3 remaining in the first half. Definitely try for one. You can hear Steve Fisher screaming out one shot. You'd like the ball to go inside to Baskin or Taylor and then pump back out the bullet. Try to get Reed to go inside. Guyton guarding Hughes. A smart play by Guyton too. Make it difficult on that dribble. Hughes. And the base. Baston. Sensational move by Hughes. And oh, it's a on the bucket. That will drive a coach crazy. Bob Knight. You could fry an egg on that forehead right there after that play. That is a killer.
Beautiful move by Hughes and somewhat of a four corners. There's Bastion with that quickness. And then just sloppy inbounds passing. And a good job by Bullock, and he is a terrific outside shooter. Pulls up. Well, let's see right now if Indiana can get back in focus. I mean, good job by Michigan at the end of the half to hold on to the ball for the last shot and execute beautifully. And then Indiana just magnified the problem by a, just a oh, play in the inbounds. And more of the same to begin the second half. Another turnover, the 12th, as Collier tried to whip it underneath the Guyton and he couldn't handle it. It's Conlon, Bullock, Taylor, Trailer, and Ward to open the half for Michigan. Collier, Miller, Patterson, Guyton, and Reed for Indiana. And I really thought Conlon had the great first half with the exception of the three fouls that he got in trouble with. His defense really led to some of those fast breaks that Michigan rolled. Trailer stepping out. Offensive rebound by Taylor. Here's for the rebound. Michigan had been out-rebounded in each of its last four games coming in, and in six out of seven. Well, they were only up four rebounds in the first half, which is kind of surprising. It seemed like they were dominating the boards, particularly on the offensive end. No double team help here. Patterson got a piece of the shot by Taylor, then Trailer got a piece of Collier, and Trailer's called for the foul. His third. Here you can see them on the boards. You got to figure Ward, who really doesn't crash on the inside as well as he probably should, but Trailer, Baston, and Taylor really can get up on the glass. They should not be out-rebounded by many people. Taylor was in like the foul call, way away from the basket. His second personal. And Steve Fisher doing a fine job right here, really getting on his club because, you know, you get this kind of lead, you fall asleep, and Indiana is a, is, a, is a ball club that could explode on you, particularly with their outside shooting. Miller, an air ball out of the corner, contested by Ward was the shot. The lob for Trailer, and he couldn't drop it in. The building shook as he landed. How about how quick he is off the floor for a man carrying about 290 pounds, 295 pounds? Keep going. <laughs> well, you think over 300, huh? I don't know about that. He has really gotten himself uh, in excellent shape compared to the first time I ever saw him as a high school player. Ward, the there's that quickness off the floor. Huh? It's amazing. His weight hasn't necessarily gone down much, but his body fat has gone down considerably. Clear out for Patterson. And he missed a short one. Last touch by Trailer. Indiana now down by 20 to play it in. Here we'll see what I was talking about, how quick he is off the floor. Elevates nicely and bounds right back up. Collier, the running hook. Beautiful hook shot. Nice motion. Young man's been hampered somewhat by that knee problem we talked about in the first Michigan game. And then we saw them against Illinois. He really had a lot of problems with his back. Today's about the best I've seen him physically in a month. The officials seem determined to make their presence known here at the start of the second half. Foul on Reed, his first. Each team with two team fouls. And here in the second half, we played less than two minutes. Conlon for three. Rebound by the seven-footer Collier, the freshman out of Springfield, Ohio. Probably not a wise shot by Conlon. I mean, they should keep packing that ball down inside, making it tough for Indiana to guard that inside presence. Guyton. Quick move to the bucket right down the heart of the lane. He has seven. Indiana within 16, 17.35 remaining. Indiana last year was 0 for 11 when they were behind at halftime. They've won three such games this year. Taylor might have gotten to travel, and he was fouled. Patterson and Miller in the area. The foul's on Andre Patterson. And there was a case where Andre just should have held his ground because he had Taylor in a position where he was going to have to take a bad shot. Memphis has really had Louisville's number this year. It's kind of amazing how certain teams look. Taylor four out of five from the line today, now five out of six. He's really improved himself as a free throw shooter. Indiana uses that free throw shooting to create weapon. And Taylor gets there late and picks up a cheap foul. And Collier will have a chance for a three-point play. 
Taylor called for his third, so the fouls are starting to pile up very quickly. You can see that Trailer tried to do the impossible, which is to get around a seven foot one man who has position on you and make the steal. By doing this, he put himself in a bad position and his teammate as well. His teammate as well. You can see, watch, he tries to come around on the bottom side and just not able to do it. Collier makes the free throw. He has seven points. And Michigan's lead is down to 14. A little lack of concentration by Michigan to start this second half. Benston tried to jam it over Miller, and Miller met him at the rack and committed the foul. Two on Charlie Miller. Maceo with a young son, five months old. Maceo the second. Drives to the basket right here. Gets hit right in the gut. But goes to the line again, and Michigan really piling up the fouls here, getting on that line often and early here in the second half. Maceo lives with the mother of his child. Londa Rupert, 1995 Michigan graduate. Two of them raised their young son. You know, we talk about all of the shortcomings of the Big Ten in the NCAA tournament last year. Maceo was not one of the guys responsible for any shortcomings. He had 23 points and 15 rebounds in that game against Texas, one of the real fine performances in the NCAA tournament opening round. Michigan is a team today 15 out of 17 from the line in the game at Indiana earlier this year. The Wolverines were 19 for 22 from the line. Outstanding in both games. Baston now over on Collier. And a turnover. Guyton tried to feed it underneath for Miller. It did not connect. Guyton has been playing so well and having a really an off ball game today. 16-37 remaining, second half. Michigan leads 48-32. An offensive foul called on Baston as he ran over Reed. Two fouls on Baston. Well, that wasn't quite the collision we had to start this ball game, but Reed doing a good job realizing that the cutters, particularly big guys, trying to go through, and he's picking up the charges. This might become a free throw shooting contest already. Four team fouls on Michigan in three and a half minutes here in the second half. And the ball knocked away from Guyton out of bounds. Indiana to play it in with 28 to shoot. And Steve Fisher really working hard as a coach right now because you know you have a game in the bag. You just don't want to throw it away. Your crowd is not into it. So he's trying to create the momentum by himself. Nice pump. Reeds fake set up the elbow jumper. He buried it. He has seven. Ward strong down the lane and missed the shot. Aston and Taylor tip it, but it comes down to Collier. Ward not a good finisher on the drive. It's a five on four now. Reed played it between his legs on the bounce back to Guyton, who buried a long three. Indiana back with an 11, 10 points for Guyton. And here's that nervous energy I was talking about. Steve Fisher sensed it. The crowd wasn't into the ball game. His club playing a lackadaisical start of the second half. This is not traditionally a very raucous atmosphere here at Chrysler Arena. It certainly has not been overly lively today. Bullock out of the corner. And a chance to get it down to single digits. Indiana on a 12-3 run over the last two and a half minutes. A score here by Indiana. Steve Fisher probably has got to go to a timeout. Guyton, a three. You got to get your club refocused. He'd like to have the TV timeout if he can, but no, he's going to go for a time. A 20-second timeout called by Fisher. His team led by 18 at halftime, but in just five minutes, Indiana has knocked 10 points off that deficit.
Here for Michigan has four Brandon Hughes. Here we're going to see a feed. I know they're behind me. I'm going to set a screen by dumping it behind. Guyton buries the outside shot. And that was a timeout by Steve Fisher to try to get his club to refocus. You go in that locker room thinking you got a 20-point lead. A nice easy day in the Big Ten. Get yourself in trouble. Another cheap foul. And it's on Mandeville, and that's his fourth. He didn't like the call, and neither does Bob Knight. And Bob Knight better be careful. His teams work very hard to get back into the game. And they don't need him to pick up a, an unwise technical, turn the momentum back against them. Full timeout now in Ann Arbor. Well, as we went to the break, you saw Bob Knight upset with the last foul called on Richard Mandeville. During this timeout, he had Neil Reed twice go from the team huddle of the bench over to the officials at the other end of the court to relay messages from Coach Knight and get an explanation as to the thought process behind the call, apparently. Pretty good move. If you're a coach, you want to get their attention. And Bob Knight figuring his club's back into this ball game. Said Ward's not a good finisher, but he handled that one pretty well. Ward gives Michigan a 10-point lead. Indiana has hit its last six shots. Reed bidding to make it seven and does. Game intensity picking up those, uh, the 20 second timeout by Steve Fisher and then of course the TV timeout helped his uh, cause and being able to get his team back in focus here. Aston missed the turnaround. One and done for Michigan in this half. Collier cleared the miss. Collier's pass deflected, Mandeville couldn't get it back. Baston got a hand on it. Now Bullock off the back. Very nice feed by Bullock, and he knows that Maceo has the great hands on that break. He can run and catch it. Indiana had a chance to get it to six. They turned it over. The lead goes back to ten. Reed moving pretty well without the ball. His teammates just didn't get it to him. Collier, nice cut. Off the feed from Mandeville. Jason Collier scored. He has nine. You know, Sean, every time a team makes a shot at the end of the half, like, you know, a wild shot from half court or something like that, I always think about that. Is this game going to wind down with those two points really mean something? And I think back at that errant pass by Indiana to end the first half. That may come back to haunt him. Collier, a dunk off the feed from Reed after Baston hit the deck and lost the ball at the other end without a whistle. It's a six-point game. If you're just joining us, Michigan led by 18 at halftime. Remember, they were just up by 14, executed well on that drive by Hughes, and then got the, the easy two on the bad pass. But an 18-point lead. There we see a double foul on the inside. And if it's Mandeville involved, he's fouled out. But is it going to be a double foul? I believe so. 21, and let's see if it's not Ward gets, gets a foul as well. I don't think Tom Rucker knows who the Michigan player is. It was Baston who appeared to be bumping with Mandeville. Officials trying to keep this under control down inside. There's Ward going in. He smacks Mandeville with the screen. Mandeville comes right back, and it will be a double foul on three and 21. Mandeville and Ward. They called it on Baston. His third, and Mandeville's fifth. Mandeville's fouled out for the third straight game. He leaves with two points. He's pleading his case with Dan Dockich. But as I said at the top of the show, Sean, Bob Knight has got 15 fouls at that position that he can have committed. Now, you certainly don't want to use them unless you get some payback fouls on the other side. Zinovich comes into the game. He's committed two fouls. Double foul, so nobody will shoot a foul. Michigan gets the ball out of bounds. Officials conferring at Hightower and Jim Burr. Over near the Michigan bench. Conlon will play it, and he's on the court with Hughes and Bullock, a three-guard lineup. Taylor and Trailer also out there. Go back to Conlon being in some foul trouble himself. I think it's really important for them to have him on this floor. Just steadying influence in that first half. 
Taylor, oh. shot. He's got as good a turnaround jump shot in the low post as anybody in college basketball. Patterson's right there with him, but Patterson, of course, ailing. Indiana has had its last nine shots to get back into the game. They're down eight, under 12 and a half minutes remaining here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Another turnover of a bad pass. Mujezinovic had it deflected by Trailer to Conlon. Bullock, the kick out. Hughes, four and three. Tipped by Taylor. Great power play on the inside. Trailer, Taylor. Four straight points for Maurice Taylor in the lead back to 10. Guyton having a big second half. That three wouldn't go. Taylor the man of the moment for Michigan. Hughes stripped by Reed. Great hands on defense by Reed. And another pass. pass. Taylor picked it off. Hughes over the seven footer Collier. And there's a, a cheap foul. This one's going to be on Trailer. Mujezinovic got the elbow. The trailing official caught it. Not a smart foul at all there. That's his fourth. We talked about this is basically a seven-man squad. They could be in some trouble. McDonough with Billy Packer. Time starting to run out on the Hoosiers now. Long way to go yet, 11.42 remain. Well, I think a good job by Steve Fisher on those timeouts. Get his club refocused. Try to get this crowd back in. That's why you play home games. You, know, you want your crowd to be in the game. Right now he picks up with full court pressure, but his team is getting into some serious foul trouble. Indiana in better position maybe to lose a player or two than is Michigan. Patterson back in the ball game now for Indiana. See if they can get him on track with some jumpers. That's Guyton with the runner, the runner rather, and that gets the lead back down to 10. 15 points for Guyton. He's having a big second half. He had five points at the half. Guyton and Reed really do a good job with that flare move for Indiana in their offense. And he's on Bullock, which is quite an assignment in the defensive end as well. Largest lead for Michigan was 20 early here in the second half. Bullock called for a charge as he passed off to Conlon beyond the arc. Two fouls now on Lewis Bullock. What I don't, excuse me, Sean, what I don't understand about Michigan right now, their guard play, and that is to get the ball down inside. You've got Baston who had a very good first half. You have Taylor who, who is really hot in the way he's wanting to play on the inside. Get the ball down and low and make things happen. The guard play right now by, uh, by Michigan is getting them in a lot of trouble. Seventh team foul in Michigan. A one on one opportunity. And it'll be Neil Reed. Best free throw shooter in the Big Ten at the line. 86% for the season. And he's been a line a bunch. 142 times coming into today's game. He's made 122. That's more than any of his other teammates had attempted. Of course, he misses with all that buildup. Indiana shooting 76, almost 77% as a team from the line. So, as Steve Fisher, Fisher said before this game, he wants to keep this ball club off the foul line. It's not going to happen here in the second half. And Indiana percentage second best of the nation behind only Western Kentucky. And let's see if Michigan goes down inside. Bullock goes inside himself. Miller controlled the rebound. Michigan by 10, nearly midway through the second half. Collier, the hook. Oh, he's got that down, doesn't he? Now, if you're playing against him, you haven't ever seen him turn and shoot the right-handed hook, have you? No. So you would assume he's going to go left. Be waiting on him, but that, that is a beautifully executed move. The, the net is up. The officials ought to stop things right now. Well, basketball will take care of it. <laughs> With the dunk, ACO Baston is 17 points, well above his average of 10 per game coming in. But the answer for Michigan is inside, go inside the rest of this ball game. Three pointer for Guyton, having another big second half against Michigan in the first meeting between these two teams this year. He had 15 points all in the second half to help key that Indiana comeback. Oh, 
Collier controlled the rebound. The deficit seven for Indiana. And Michigan's guards, for some reason, think that this is their game. This game is inside game for them. Guyton, terrific outside shooting. He has 21 points, and he continues on at 21 points in the win over Penn State Tuesday night. 24, a career high last Saturday against Ohio State. Third straight game with 20 plus points for A.J. Guyton, the freshman from Peoria, Illinois. Timeout, Michigan. Indiana within four, as close as they have been in the second half. by 20 points in the second half. You can't afford to miss many shots, and Indiana has not. They're 13 for 16 in the second half. The decided edge and bench scoring for Indiana today, and A.J. Guyton has been leading the comeback. It was Desmond Howard who led the ball game here. He was posing with his Heisman trophy, so he knows how to win and get himself in a position to be a major factor. And the Englanders uh, still can see him running that kickoff back with a touchdown, but really was the big play in the Super Bowl victory. Let's see if Michigan will go inside. They don't. And as long as they continue to try to beat Indiana from the perimeter, they're going to be in trouble. Right, feels it now, a little high stepping as he dribbled across the timeline. Indiana trails by four. Post up by Reed. Indiana. Working on Hughes. Much better use of the ball right now by Indiana. There's that flare move I talked about. Patterson follows up the read, miss, and he got fouled on the way back up by Maceo Baston, and that's four on Baston. Well, we talked about the trading of the fouls in those inside positions. Indiana's lost one player so far. Vanderville out with five fouls, but Michigan with Trailer and now Baston in foul trouble are in some serious difficulty. Lewis Bullock returns for Hughes. Patterson will shoot two. Of course, with the uh, the number one win out of conference that uh, Indiana has is that big win against Duke in Madison Square Garden, where Patterson uh, had 39 points and played a marvelous game. That'll help him when it comes to NCAA tournament time, particularly the way that Duke is playing right now. Indiana 13 and one out of the conference. When you look at their 19 wins, that win against Duke and the win against Michigan in Bloomington, really the only two that jump out of you is real impressive wins. The rest of them, they're all wins, but uh, not a lot of heavyweights on that schedule. Now they're just down by two now. They may have another one here. Trailer, the turnaround. Long, Collier puts it. Trailer flushes it. But isn't it amazing when they go inside how good things happen for this team? Under eight minutes remaining, Michigan by four. Patterson will try a three. Got a Mike question. Deflected. Got a question that shot. Bob Knight jumps off the bench. He can't believe it either. And that might be it for Patterson yeah. in the ball game. Yeah, he's going to sit. That was not a good shot. Everything had been going fine for the oh. team. Watch goes Taylor at the rack by Collier and Patterson. And the Michiganders wanted a foul. Miller runs the baseline and missed the short one. Trailer controls. Nine rebounds for Robert Trailer, the sophomore from Detroit. Oh, there's another foul. Yes, sir. It's going to be Trailer. A great job by Collier. Trailer not paying attention as he ran down the floor. 
It's the second time today he's run right into a player from Indiana and picked up a cheap foul. And that one sends him out of the game for good. Five personals on Robert Trailer. It's an excellent call by the official. I mean, you do not have the right to run over people. And the tractor trailer thinks he's in a kind of demolition derby here today. Just foolish fouls. Seven points, nine rebounds for trailer. We mentioned earlier he did not play in this game last year. A broken arm. Suffered in the car accident two days before the game. And he thought at that time his career might be over. Steve Fisher visited him at the hospital. He was on the verge of tears and was worried about whether he'd able play, ever be able to play basketball again. Now you have a situation for Michigan. They have basically no substitutes for the front court. And uh, they're going to have to go the rest of the way with Taylor and Baskin. Collier, soft touch on the free throw. As Collier started out this season, his Big Ten play as a freshman with his biggest game against Michigan State. And again, I, I really think if it hadn't been for the knee problem that he had and the, and the back problems, his stats would be even better. He's had a very solid year. Coming on lately, averaging 12 points and five rebounds over the last four games. At 16 points in the game at Iowa three games ago, Michigan by two. As we tick down to seven minutes remaining at Chrysler Arena. Bullock the runner. Well, you play Bullock for the jump shot, so occasionally he'll get with the pump fake by you. There's bucket of the half for Bullock. He is 13 in the game. Every time Uye Zinovich touches the ball in the low post, if you're an Indiana fan, you're going to get a little nervous. Reed missed another three. Taylor the rebound. Six and a half minutes remaining, Michigan by four. The trailer fouled out of both games against Indiana this year. Making a much more concentrated effort now to get back to what got him the lead. Good spacing on the outside, pumping the ball down inside. And Collier called for his second foul. Six team fouls on Indiana. They are not yet over the limit, but it was a shooting foul. It'll be two at the line for Baston. Reed and Muye Zinovich go out. Patterson's back in. It's Patterson, Collier, Guyton, Lewis, and Miller in the ballgame for IU. You mentioned Guyton. He's had a number of 40 minute games so far for me. And when you talk about how often Bob Knight has changed his lineup in different starting lineups, but uh, I don't believe Guyton's been out of the ballgame yet today. He's averaging over 33 minutes a game. It's a team high minute total. Bastard with 18 points, tying his season high. Michigan by five. Not picking him up full court, not to try to steal, just to occupy him. Take a little time off the clock. Collier had it poked away by Baston. Shot clock, 13. Patterson, nice. Oh. Little hesitation, ducked right inside. That's also good because he was taken out of the game for that jump shot he took remember, a few minutes ago. Bob Knight put him right back in there and got his attention. He has eight points now. Patterson has reached double figures in only one of the last five games in which he has appeared. Ward, nice move. He'll have a chance for three. Ward taking the ball to the basket a lot better day than I've seen in a long time. That one went up with the left hand. Everybody plays him for the jump shot. He's taking advantage of it. Goes right by Miller. Even though you're playing it for the jump shot, you don't want to give up that easy a defensive one. He's getting a little instruction for Bob Knight as we speak. Three fouls on Miller. Ward at the line, four for four today. Wolverines by six, five and a half minutes remaining. Steve Fisher, warning Bullock about Lewis's left hand. How about that shot by Patterson? Acrobatic bucket by Patterson. Looked like he was turning his back to the basket and still flipped it up and in. He'll have a chance for three. 
Here's the MVP of the NIT preseason. Terrific job on the inside. Used his body to shield against the defenders. MVP of that preseason NIT in large part because of his 39 points, a career high in the championship game victory over Duke. And the winning basket against Evansville from down in the corner in a mir miraculous comeback. As Bob Knight said, we did not deserve to win the game against a well-coached Jim Cruz team that night. He's had two game-winning baskets the end of ball games. That one against Evansville and another at Notre Dame at a one-point Indiana win. Michigan by three. Taylor in traffic. He'll go to the line for two. Patterson called for the foul. I'll go back to that Conlon jump shot in the second half, which I said, even though he was open, was not the way that Michigan got the lead and not the way that they would contend with, continue with the lead. Now you can see Michigan getting back to what really got him into that good position in the first half, pounding it down inside. Timeout called by Indiana. Foul on Patterson, his fourth. It'll be a 20-second timeout. I keep thinking back to what you said a moment ago about that shot at the end of the half, the steal of the inbound yeah. pass and the bucket at the buzzer. This team is not that big a, a difference anymore. So it'll be a tough selection process. Indiana trying to earn its 20th win of the season today. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, with the lock that it looks like Minnesota has on the Big Ten Championship this year, that Bob Knight, for the first time in his career at Indiana, will go through a four-year period without winning a Big Ten Championship. Kind of a miraculous statistic in terms of consistency of a program. Knight won 11 Big Ten championships. That's the conference record. Hoosiers last won the conference title in 1993. Michigan amazingly hasn't won it since 1986. They've won the Final Four three times in that span. But the highest of the Fat Five ever finished was second. Wolverines by four, 440 remaining. 12 on the shot clock as Guyton missed. It's us, it's us, it's us. Out of bounds, Michigan ball. Well, the clock became uh, the sixth defender that time for Michigan. Guyton had to take somewhat of a bad shot. You like to have the ball in the center of the floor when the clock is working against you defensively. You get down in that corner and it makes it tough. Takes away all the angles of what you can do with your teammates. Tough shot. Oh, and he buried it. Leaning left from just inside the three-point line. We've got some of the better pure shooters in college basketball on the floor out here with Bullock, Reed, Guyton. Guyton looking for some room. Badgered all the way by Conlon. Michigan really picking up their defensive intensity now. Lewis didn't want to shoot a three. Collier, double team, made it anyway over the outstretched arm of Baston, and he has the wingspan of a person seven feet three with Baston's long arms. 15 second half points for Collier. Jason is 17 in all. So the two freshmen leading the way for Indiana. Not that unusual for their season. Well, the four freshmen who are true freshmen this year combined for 42% of Indiana's scoring, 34% of their rebounding, 62% of their assists. So it's a very young Indiana team and a lot of production from the four true freshmen. Miller missed the three. Patterson the rebound. Right. Packed hard across the arms. Both Taylor and Conlon were there. And the foul is on Conlon, his fourth. He had three very quickly in the first half. Miller started the season 0 for 11 from three. He's really picked it up. Basically shooting 50% from three since that point. And had a good wide open shot, which you've got to take. Now Guyton has the line. 81% for the season. You know what's really interesting? You talk about those outstanding freshmen and the way they're playing. Collier was recruited by everybody. His father went to Georgia Tech. Here you see the uh, the freshman. Guyton probably was a guy that when he signed in Indiana, everybody didn't say, wow, they got Guyton. You know, and that's what's amazing to see. He's going to be the freshman of the year in the Big Ten, but wasn't one of those most heralded recruits.
this one. Appears headed for the wire as well. Indiana with two full timeouts and a 20 left. Michigan with one of each left. The arrow favors Indiana. What were these coaches talking about during the timeout? Well, I think just to stay what they're doing effectively offensively. I think Bob Knight's team now being uh, much better with the ball. Remember what they got behind in the first half. Guys were throwing errant passes everywhere. I think he likes the fact that the ball's in Guyton's hands, and, uh, and that's what they want to do the rest of the game. And if you're Michigan, keep the ball in Conlon's hands and go down inside with the inside game being first and out to Bullock second. Conlon, Bullock, Baston, Ward, Taylor for Michigan. And it may turn into a free throw shooting contest as we go down the wire. Based on the season statistics, edge for Indiana there. And he has 20, a uh, season high for Maceo. Now that Michigan has gotten back to their game plan, they're much more effective. There you can see though, Indiana with Guyton with the ball in his hands. Patterson passed up an open outside shot. Probably should have taken it. Reed, Guyton, Miller, Collier, and Patterson on the court for Indiana. With 15 on the shot clock, Patterson a miss. Baston a big board. Uh, Patterson not playing with confidence on that shot. You know, it was there. He needed to go ahead and take it. Think back to that, that long jumper he took and uh, came out of the ball game. And he's, uh, he's their leading scorer. He's got to look forward to taking that wide open shot. Bob Knight has been frustrated by the inconsistency of Patterson throughout nice. his career. Conlon to Baston did not connect. Good idea, bad execution. 13 turnovers now by the Wolverines. And there, if you're Conlon, what you've got to think about now, you've got a four-point lead, and the clock is in your favor. You don't have to make the great play. It was a good idea, but it was a tough passing angle. They try to go to Collier. Baston having a huge game, got a hand on it. And poked it free for Bullock. Minute and a half left. Michigan with the ball, leading by four. Smart play by Bullock. You don't need any more points. You need control of that ball. You don't want to foul Bullock, an 84% free throw shooter. Strong drive, Ward rejected by Collier. And he was fouled on the way up. It's a good, solid drive, though, by Ward. He wanted to put it away with the dunk. Collier, who's played a terrific game today, both ends of the floor, showing some great effort here to stop Ward. Miller goes up there with a hand, Collier as well. You know, kind of interesting, free throw shooting, I said, is going to play a part in this. The best free throw shooting day ever against Indiana was 12 for 12. In the Western region a number of years ago by a guy named Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> How's that a first stat for you? Huh? You know, that, that's a trivia question. People go a long way to try to figure that one out. Taylor made two. Well, Michigan's had an outstanding day at the line today, 20 out of 24. Well, that's two games in a row against Indiana. A great free throw shooting by the Wolverines. Timeout, Indiana. In the first half of the next Indiana foul, both teams will be in the double bonus. Equal number of timeouts, the arrow in favor of IU. Well, what you try to do now if you're Bob Knight is extend this game as long as possible. You've got to go for the quick shot, but you don't have to go for three. Coach Knight has Miller to inbound on the court with Reed, Guyton, Patterson, and Collier. For Michigan, it's Bullock and Conlon, Ward, Taylor, and Baston. On the other end of the floor, defensively, the one thing you don't want to do is foul Bullock. And if you're Michigan, you want to play solid defense here, go for no steals, just force Indiana to take time. Clock goes under a minute. Good job so far if you're Michigan. Boy, how about this freshman, huh? He is having an unbelievable second half, a career high 26 points for A.J. Guyton, the freshman from Peoria. 21 of those points here in the second half. It's a three-point game with 
50 seconds and change remaining, and Indiana has used its 20-second timeout. Didn't need the three, but took it. Didn't have to use the dribble. Great range on the shot. Pretty good defense by Conlon. Here we see. He looks at it, doesn't use the dribble, so goes straight up. Conlon playing pretty good defense there. Just gets it right over the top of his head. And now with 50 seconds to go. You don't have to go for the steal if you're Indiana. Solid defense. Hope you get that ball back. And John, we're going to go back to that two points at the end of the half. Wow. Huh? Robbie Eggers, careless inbounds pass. Bullock picked it off and scored at the buzzer. Whistle stops the action. For some debris on the floor, paper airplane had landed near midcourt. The ward pointing to Taylor, saying throw it long, but you do not want to take that chance now on a pass the length of the court. A lot of screening, and Indiana not guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, so we've got one extra defender here on the screen. Well, look, an outstanding free throw shooter. Conlon would be a player to foul. He's under 60% from the line if he touches it. Just ride it out and rely on their defense. Hope they get one shot to tie it. 17 on the shot clock. And if you're Indiana, let this clock go down. You got about 14 seconds difference here. Don't commit a foul. Bullock, a tough shot, way off. Reed battling for the rebound. Aston held ball. Timeout. Reed had the ball and was granted the timeout. Indiana would have had it on the arrow in any event. But the timeout came with Reed in possession of the ball. And a good job by Guyton. Very smart play, not the foul at all on that play. I have no idea. The timeout and getting the ball on the arrow, but when you're fighting for the ball, you're really not thinking about that. I, I wouldn't imagine you'd have the presence of mind to say, hey, coach, I didn't call the time because I knew I had the arrow. So we have a situation right now where if you're Michigan, you want that ball in Bullock's hand. Mm -hmm. So that's the key thing on this inbounds, to get it to your key free throw shooter. If you're Indiana, you've got to start thinking now, if I've got the ball, I've got to be thinking three. I don't have a lot of time left, as I did the last possession, to go ahead and, and, and work the ball around Figuring I get two at a time. Indiana to inbound with Guyton, Reed, Miller, Patterson, and Collier on the court. Michigan, Bullock, Conlon, Ward, Baston, and Taylor. And now a 20-second timeout called by Steve Fisher. So only one full timeout left, and it belongs to Michigan. Well, Fisher wanted to see what the alignment was going to look like from Bob Knight. Bob Knight sitting there. We really can surround any kind of defense with Reed. Good three-point shooter. Guyton, who's shown us what he can do in the clutch. And you'd have to say Miller can shoot it pretty well. Uh, I, I would think that Bob Knight would have probably, in his mind, be thinking a little bit about Lewis going in the game and let him handle the ball and maybe to kick out to those two outstanding shooters. Guyton, six for 11 from three in the game. Michigan trying to remain in sole possession of second place in the Big Ten behind Minnesota. Indiana trying to get above 500. In the Big Ten, six and six. And the main thing you don't want to do if you're Michigan under any circumstances is to commit a foul. Unless you want that strategy to foul and get the ball back. Reed guarded by Bullock. they got to be thinking three all the way now. Patterson with Taylor right on him. Reed underneath the Collier. Out to Guyton. Guyton for a three and the time. Two seconds left, 7-3 of the game for Guyton. Bullock at the buzzer, no. Overtime. It took them the full 20 minutes, minus two seconds to make up the 18-point halftime deficit. But the Hoosiers did on the 7-3 of the game by A.J. Guyton. And a great move by Indiana. Go inside, get the defense to drop back. And what was amazing for Michigan, why would you drop back when the ball goes in the post? Let the guy have the two. You've got to stay on your man out in the three-point territory. The two-point shot by Collier, you win the game by one point. Everybody fell back inside. Guyton posted up at the three-point line. Freshman to freshman on the pass. Terrific job by Indiana. And on the left, Maybe the most relieved man in the building, 
Robbie Eggers, at least for the moment, the game didn't come down to his sloppy inbounding pass at the end of the half. There's the two points we talked about. <laughs> That's right. It's amazing, Sean, how that happens over the course of time, and you, and you think, well, the guy makes hits a shot at the, at the half, and uh, does it pay back, and it did in this case. Back for overtime in a moment. Back at Chrysler Arena, suddenly silent as A.J. Guyton's three-pointer with 2.1 seconds left to force overtime. Third overtime game of the season for each team. Indiana one and one, both games at home. A win over Butler and a loss to Minnesota. While Michigan is two and all. Overtime wins at home against Bradley and what was considered to be a neutral court game at Auburn Hills against Arizona, a game here on CBS. Well, Guyton has really had an incredible second half in every respect. Defensive end of the floor, judgments with the ball, and of course, great shooting. Baston won the tip. Just joining us, Robert Trailer has fouled out for Michigan. Richard Mandeville has fouled out for Indiana. Nobody coming to meet the ball. Close to five seconds. Ward guarded by Miller. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. It is at 16. Turnaround jumper. Taylor short with a one-hander. Guyton tipped it to Patterson. Indiana has led only once in this game at 12 to 11 with 13 minutes left in the first half. They can take the lead now. There's that flare move for the jumper. Collier by Baston. Miller the follow. No block out, and you can see how Michigan now probably wearing a down a little bit without Trailer in the game. Haven't had any substitute in that front court. Only the second lead for Indiana and the largest lead, a two-point edge for the Hoosiers. Conlon, tough shot, wouldn't go. Conlon tipped it to Baston. He was followed by Miller. And that's five on Charlie Miller. He's out of the game. Here you see. Kyle, you're doing a great job rolling to the inside. It took so much pressure by Taylor having to come over and help out. Ward coming over to help out. Nobody there to block out Miller. First time this year, Charlie Miller is fouled out of a game. Now here's a situation where Bob Knight probably goes with three guards. Yes, that's the, that's the substitution move he's going to make. Coming into today's game, only five players have fouled out this year for Indiana. They've lost two to fouls today. You know, I think back in 1976, the last undefeated team in college basketball, Indiana. And one of the teams that took them to overtime, and probably the team that had the best chance to beat them, it was the uh, Kent Benson tip that beat Michigan down in Bloomington. It was an overtime ball game. They won two overtime games that year. They also beat Kentucky in overtime. And they finished the undefeated season with a, a win, win over Michigan, over Michigan yep. in the national championship game. And that one wasn't close at all. Bobby Wilkerson getting hurt right at the top of the game, but uh, Indiana was just uh, awesome that day. 22 points for Baston. The game tied at 77. More than a minute played in overtime. Lewis into the game now for Indiana with Miller out. Guyton. Running by Baston, rebounded. Guyton had to double clutch that one, but still got a good release on the shot. Eight 
rebounds for Baskin to go with his 22 points today. Ward hits the deck. He collided with Lewis. No whistle. They both went down. Fans groaned loudly. Well, there was a guard that took advantage of his size being down low. Good drive by Reed. And Ward's got to realize he's got to go over the top of Lewis because Lewis is going to be down underneath him if he drives. Maceo Baston looks very tired now for Michigan. Very slow getting up and down the floor. They go into him. He was fouled by Collier. Collier stayed right with him. Baston may be tired, but he knows he's no sense looking over at that sideline because the one guy that'd be coming in has been long gone with the five fouls. Robert Trailer. Three fouls now on Collier. And we talked about Bob Knight swapping fouls, and he ended up with what he wanted. He sat down one key Michigan player and his bench much deeper at that position. Baston, 9 of 11 from the line. Only seven men have played in the game for Michigan, and one of them, Trailer, has fouled out. And Baston played a huge part in having Michigan hang in there. Watch this total team movement on offense without the ball by Indiana. Too quick a shot. When you have the three guards in the game, you want to make Michigan play as much defense as long as possible. Patterson has made some poor decisions shooting the basketball today. Tie game, midway through overtime. Ward didn't come back to the ball. Michigan's gone five minutes without a field goal. Ward a miss. Free ball got tipped out to Lewis. He leads a three on two. Reed. It hit Collier. He was trying to feed Lewis, so it spotted up behind the line, and Collier ran right into it. Now give Taylor a lot of hustle for a lot of credit for his hustling down the court. That's what altered that shot by Reed. 79 all, under two minutes left in the first overtime. Tense situation by some tired players out of there. There are a lot of guys that have played a lot of minutes here today. Guyton has never come out of this ball game as an example. Taylor strong inside. Patterson, who has not played any in the last two games, being asked now to play a lot under game conditions, where well, you know his conditioning not good. Steal by Conlon on a hold by Guyton. Tried the crossover dribble. <laughs> You see Taylor on the inside, just powers this ball up inside. Patterson, as I said, not in the best of condition. Probably doesn't have good legs out there right now and not able to elevate on the shot. First trip to the line today for Conley. Doesn't get there very much. And he's just a 59% free throw shooter, 19 of 32 for the year, but nine out of 12 in Big Ten play. <laughs> Bend your knees, yelled Steve Fisher as the first one missed. A little bit too late <laughs> to be talking about that. <laughs> this is the pair. Off. Collier controlled it and tipped it to Reed. So still a two-point lead for Michigan. Patterson for the tie, off the mark. He got it back. Patterson will shoot two. Terrific effort by a young guy that has been hampered by injuries and you know has got to be worn out out there. And just battled his way back for a great offensive rebound here. And Billy, the news gets worse for Michigan. Five fouls on Baston. Now they have to go three guards against three guards. They'll bring Hughes back into the game. Might not be all that bad for them. The problem is Ward doesn't like to play down inside. So Guyton has played, uh, what, all but two minutes in this ball game. He's been asked to play on both ends of the floor. Tough assignment on Bullock. Handling the ball on offense. Hughes is going to come in. So now we've got three guard offenses on both teams. And if anyone else comes into the game for Michigan, it'll be a player who's played very little this season. They play seven. Routinely, two of them have fouled out. They're left with the other five. And Trailer has got to be thinking about those two totally unnecessary fouls where he picked up just running down the court to get in position. 
Now a long time to wait for Patterson to ponder these free throws. He's a 77% shooter from the line for the year and three for three today. This one to tie it with a minute 22 left. Michigan leads 81-80. High game. 122 remaining. Conlon calls timeout. 81 all in Ann Arbor. The first game where Michigan made the great second half comeback with outstanding shooting. Guyton has been sensational from the outside. Not just the shot that he hit to put this into overtime, but the the young man has just played a sensational basketball game on both ends of the floor. Now you have a situation, remember, where the one free throw shooter for Michigan that'll probably handle the ball a lot, Conlon, is not a good free throw shooter. He's already missed uh, two the last time he went to the line. So you don't like to have that key ball handler with the ball in his hands knowing that if he drives and gets fouled, he goes to the line shooting under 60%. Shot clock 13 as they get it into Taylor, one on one with Patterson. Bounces off, rebounded by Reed. Neil Reed at 6 2, snuck in for the rebound. Second big rebound he's got in, in, uh, in the overtime. 45 seconds on the game clock, 24 now on the shot clock. Collier one on one with Taylor, pass deflected by Bullock. Shot clock 10. Guyton wide open. Beautiful rub off. Guyton moving without that ball. He has 31 points and only five in the first half. Timeout Michigan. Now down by two with 21.2 remaining. Looks like Patterson hurt his knee there just on a, a setting that screen. You can see where Conlon came over the top. But a great job by Guyton. Look at that curl move, right off Patterson, terrific shot. That's tonight on CBS. Still down two, you don't have to go for the three-point shot at all. Say get that ball inside, make Indiana collapse, and then look to go outside to Bullock, similar to the strategy Indiana pulled at the end of the regulation. And Michigan must get this ball in bounds. They're out of timeouts. Hughes to inbound to Conlon. Guarded by Lewis. Both teams employing three guards. Bullock's got a mismatch if they get in the ball. Patterson's on him. Bullock off a ward screen for three and the lead. No, rebound Patterson. And he is fouled on the floor by Conlon with 5.4 seconds left. Good gutsy effort by Patterson. We talked about how his leg was hit on that solid screen that he made for Guyton. This is some comeback by Indiana. I mentioned last year they had never won a game. They were behind at halftime, 0-11. So this year they've already come back in three games in which they were behind at halftime to win. This could be the fourth. And Conlon has fouled out. He is the third. Wolverine to foul out, so Ron Oliver, a walk-on, comes into the game. He's appeared in 13 games this season, averaging three minutes per game in those 13. He's only scored seven points the whole year. And Chad, I want to go back to about the first two minutes of this second half. Steve Fisher could sense that the crowd was not in the game. His team had lost its focus. Remember, he was screaming on that sidelines. He never could get them back to the proficiency they had and the effort that they had in that first half. And Indiana with great outside shooting, particularly by Guyton and Reed, brought this thing back. They have stolen one here, potentially. Two-point lead for IU, 5.4 left in overtime. Patterson, five out of five from the line. That's a huge miss. Now Michigan has a chance. And somehow you want that ball in Bullock's hands coming up this court with some kind of solid screen for him to get the shot off. They need a three to tie. Timeout, Indiana. 84-81, Hoosiers.
that's pretty good strategy. We saw Michigan yesterday work on this exact situation. Down three with five seconds to go. Remember the cross-court pass to Ward after penetration by the dribble by Hughes. Everybody who assumes that it's Bullock going to take the shot. And if you're Indiana, you're going to pick up full court and try to make them take as much time as possible to get this ball over half court. Here comes Hughes with the dribble. Ward's open. They didn't get it to him quickly enough. Ward at the buzzer. No, he was wide open, but Hughes killed time on the dribble. That gave the defense time to get over and contest Ward's three-point shot, and it would not go. A tremendous come-from-behind win for Indiana as the Hoosiers earn their 20th victory of the year. There was Ward. It was exactly the way it was diagrammed, but look at how he's fading down to the left on that jump shot. Never gave it a chance. Terrific comeback by Indiana. They were down 18 at halftime. Now for Billy Packard. Sean McDonough saying so long from Chrysler Arena, where Indiana has defeated Michigan 84-81 in overtime. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on the road to our 16th Final Four.